course of 20, 2022 metric results, and we are joined in studio by Kevet Wesikonya, a pupil at St. Martin at Dupore's combined school. She managed to get six distinctions and 100% in maths. Kebeswe joins us now to discuss her achievements and plans for the future. Kebeswe, I'm astounded. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How does it, how does it feel to be, to be a genius, to be a confirmed genius? <laughs> it feels good. I'm very proud of myself and the hard work that I put into my studies. So, so I'm interested to find out, you get 100% for, for maths. Did you expect to get 100%? Yeah, I it was supposed to be 100% because I worked very hard. I attended a program called Kudranong, a center for science, math, and technology. And I used to go to school for Saturday and Sunday for three years. And I also attended my school, and the teachers were so determined. And I wanted to make them proud. Okay, I, I kind of figure that, you know, when you, yeah. when you get 100% for math, it's something that you already know before you, before you get there. So... Let's talk a little about the, the emotions that you went through when you received this or you were told that, you know, you had the uh, Susutu, you had 74, you had 83, you had 200s, you had a 92 for geography, 90 for life sciences, 96 for uh, physical sciences. Remarkable. How did you feel? I was overwhelmed and I was really excited. It's just a mix of, mixture of emotions that made me, wow, very emotional. I shed a few happy tears. Yeah, yeah and, your, and your family, what was their reaction? Did they, did they expect you to do this? Oh, they, they said it was expected. They actually held a small gathering for me to celebrate me, and they were so happy because I was the first one in the family to obtain more than two distinctions, and the first one who was actually pursuing a different degree in the family. Okay, well, we salute you too. Well done on that. So let's talk about the future. What are your plans? I'm planning to go to UCT to study medicine. So in a few years, uh, you, you would like to be a doctor? I would like to be a doctor. Yeah. I, don't, I have not decided on, the, on which course I want, on the specialty, yeah. but I'll, I'm pretty sure I will get one. Have you already been accepted at UCT? Yeah, I've already been accepted and I already have a residence. I'm planning, I'm actually packed to go to Cape Town. Oh, fantastic. When do you leave? Uh, next week on the 28th. Okay, that's excellent. Well, let's talk about your study routine. I, I know that there are a lot of young people that are watching this show at the moment, and some obviously will, will watch it uh, once it's recorded on our, on our YouTube channel. How did you develop a routine? What was that routine like? As you, I mean, you talked about working really, really hard for three years. Uh, what was that routine like? Uh, at first, I struggled, but because there are a lot of things that you have to keep up with. You have to keep up with the university applications. You have to keep up with the puzzle applications, the mm. homeworks, and all the tests. So I started to come up with a strategy by doing, by doing, uh, I allocated a f set of time for mm. homeworks, and uh, after probably eight, I would then study, and then I will make sure that I understand the things that I study so that when we get to class, I get a full understanding of what the teacher is saying, and I get to do the homeworks very quickly. Now, was this your own doing, or did you have a sit-down with your teachers or, or your members of your family that said to you, you know, this is the best way to do it, or did you devise that plan on your own? Well, they really helped. My family uh, came up with a plan to lessen my house chores because there were a lot and I could not cope so mm. they decided to cut me off from some of the chores and I could do a few and uh, the homeworks and the studying was able to yeah well that, that's a pretty interesting aspect because we, we don't often think about it and especially when you look at the, the the girl child and the amount of housework or house chores that you that you have to do uh, that's pretty considerate do you find that some of your friends got the same benefits or did they have to struggle with chores at home they, I do have a few friends that struggled with chores at home, but I, they really were encouraging me because if they could do it, I could still do it. And I'm really proud of them and how hard do they, the, hard they, the work they did. Now, one of the things that you mentioned is that 8 o'clock was a time that you would focus on, on studying uh, every evening. Now, we know that in the last couple of years, there's been a huge amount of load shedding. How did you work around that? Well, I came up with a routine to sleep during load shedding if it's two hours so that I could wake up after because it's very difficult to study in the dark. The f that few light 
disturbs your eyes and you can't actually see some of the things. Mm. So it's very discouraging. So I decided to catch up on sleep with this two and four hours so that after that I can wake up and study in normal conditions. So let's talk about your friends, uh, those around you. How do they perform? Do they do as well as you? Do they feel encouraged? Do they feel discouraged by your performance? Well, my friends did as very good. Some much better than me. Really? I have, yes. <laughs> I have a friend, um, Olotu Mundao. She was the n number one. She got an uh, award for the top learner in township schools yesterday. And I have another friend who got six distinctions and a lot more. Well, well they say birds of a feather flock together. And I suppose that, that's an important thing. Yeah. So in, in choosing your friends, did you choose them because they were smart? Did you choose them because they worked hard and you had all of that in common or is it just a coincidence? Uh, it was a co coincidence at most mm. but when I later found out that they were hard, as hard workers as me I found out that I got good friends. Yeah. Now let's talk about extracurricular activities. So you're, you're 18 years old and as a teenager you, you want to have fun, you want to listen to music, uh, you want to do sports. Did that uh, interfere with your studies or did you put all of that aside so you could focus on this uh, final year? I put that all aside and focused on my studies because I knew who were. the career that I wanted to pursue was full on studies and uh, the extracurricular activities would not help, he, help me in any way. So I decided to put them aside and focus on my studies. So Kit, explain to me, well help me understand how an 18 year old is, is this mature because I mean when I was 18 or 17 I wasn't making life choices uh, at this level and, and setting aside sports and, and other things that, that interested me. I think it's being a big sister and in mm. a household full of little children. So I knew they looked up to me because my results spoke for me. So I knew I had to grow up and set an example and open the way and the path for my family. So I knew I had to have a different type of mindset so that I can achieve what most did not achieve. So, yeah. Okay, so let's go back again to the landscape and what's, what's ahead of you. Uh, you're going to be studying to, to become a doctor. Uh, in, in five years, you should, you should qualify. Um, what does that horizon look like for you? What are, you, what are your plans beyond becoming a doctor? Because you're obviously a very, very ambitious young lady. My plan is to open up my own hospital with a few of, uh, of my friends. So after I finish with the medical school and specialize, uh, I want to uh, form an alliance with my other friends who will be doctors mm -hmm. and we open up a, a, a hospital because we, I realize that in South Africa we have very less hospitals, especially in rural areas. Well, we're going to be watching you and wanting to invest in that, uh, in that hospital, obviously, as it, uh, as it develops. Now, again, your message to the young people that haven't written, uh, that is in their final year this year, and also those that wrote and didn't do so well. Well, my message is there are many, many ways to succeed in life. Uh, there are many ways to succeed in education. So not succeeding right now does not mean it's the end of the road for you. And also for the ones that want to pursue the just believe in yourself. You need to keep pushing, keep going. It's not the end of the world. And also, just, <laughs> yeah, just get inspiration for me because I, I, get, I got very discouraged during the year, but I pushed with my teachers. So, yeah. Okay, so finally, let's talk about the teachers and their involvement. You know, all too often we, we seem to forget the teachers and put a lot of focus on, uh, on the smart students and certainly the parents and the, and the families. How big a role did the teachers play in you succeeding? Well, I had a couple of maths teachers in my life and physical science teachers and they always encouraged me that I can do this. And the teachers, they, w they would open the doors for us when you want to talk. We can always come to them for encouragement and ways to study. Uh, at my school we have a psychologist so we you can even schedule a psychologist if you're struggling so that she can mm. help you and communicate with the teachers if you're so afraid so my teachers played a huge role they encouraged me also the teachers from Kutlano and the rewards that they kept giving giving us it really pushed me 
Kebetsue Sukonya pupil who achieved six distinctions and 100% to Matt. Congratulations and thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you. Well, great conversation and those numbers again are on the screen at the moment. If you're a student out there and you are struggling, looking for somebody to speak to, that number that you can dial at 0800-567-7567 or the 24-hour helpline at 0800-456-7689. You can also reach the Sandag Mental, Mental Health Line 011-234-4837.